I'll be home a little later, those were the last words that Katrine de Kaupier, 15 years old, said to her parents in mid-December 1991. Afterwards there was no trace of her until June 1992 when her body was found naked and strangled on a vacant lot near the Tiesmans Tunnel in Antwerp. Despite many suspects and anonymous references to Katrine's parents and the magazine Blick, her murderer was never caught. Keep watching to get a timeline of events and to know what was in the letter. I am to ask you as our viewer. Although I realize it would be a small miracle. If you lived in Antwerp during the late 80s early 90s, if you heard or picked up something, know something, remember something, as tiny or unrelevant you maybe find it, it can be a possible lead to solve the case and catch Katrine her killer. Please step forward and share this information. After a pleasant evening with her boyfriend on December 17, 1991, Katrine de Kalpier walks to the bus stop on the Iserlaan in Antwerp. When she gets there she sees that she has missed her bus home. She enters the then trucker's café Les Routiers to notify her parents. Greet Verschreigen, the then manager, tells in an article in the Antwerp Gazette it was already dark and the café was packed, around a quarter past ten a young girl came in. Katrine was beautiful, with blonde hair cut in a square, dressed rather chicly in black. In a café full of men, she immediately stood out, she asked if she could call and I allowed her to do this," Katrine's mother would say four years later in 1996. That night she disappeared I knew I would never see Katrine again, at least not alive, you just feel things like that as a mother. A little later she adds. I see the research as a puzzle, and one day, perhaps, and perhaps even by chance, there will be a piece that completes that puzzle, that the perpetrator can then be arrested and only then will we know exactly what happened. I want to know and I will know someday. A friend of Katrine's mother would suggest that Katrine and her classmates had to write an essay by the teacher about urban legends. Katrine wrote an essay about the mysterious disappearance of a girl. It is not clear whether this friend wanted to suggest or insinuate something. In 1998 the case again shook the entire media. Regina Luth, who appears as witness X1 in the aftermath of the Detroux case, states that she strangled Katrine de Kalpier during a sex party in a castle. X1 referred in a fax to a castle in Zgravenwezel. According to X1, several children were murdered in the castle in the presence of numerous prominent figures. Luf herself was allegedly abused for years by a whole network of child abusers, of which Michelle Niall and Mark Dutroux were also part. Katrine's mother does not believe X1's statements. After an investigation into Luth's statements that lasted 11 months, the investigators note the following. Verification, interrogation and on-site observations have shown that many of the facts cited by Regina Luth are impossible, improbable and unverifiable and contradict each other. The Dutch police then suddenly produce a photo of a girl believed to be Katrine de Kalpier in June 1999. An old class friend of Katrine de Kalpier is formal. I felt nauseous when I saw that photo for the first time, this is her, there is no doubt about it, except for the color of the hair, which is slightly darker in the photo, I don't see any physical difference. Katrine's parents are also just as formal. It is not Katrine. Meanwhile, Le Routier remains the center of the storm. The Belgian branch of a Dutch porn company is said to be located on the top floor of Le Routier, and Katrine was in that cafe, right? Walter Verschreigen, owner of Le Routier, had to sound the alarm in the summer of 1999. His stopover on the way to the port attracts fewer and fewer customers, especially because the restaurant is repeatedly associated with several files of disappeared and missing children. Walter, who has been running Le Routier for 11 years, says this is completely unfair. Fifteen years after Katrine's disappearance, the Mechelen Public Prosecutor's Office found a box of newspaper clippings from the magazine Blick during a house search for child pornography. The clippings are about the anonymous letter writer who bombarded de Alders and the weekly magazine Blick with letters in the months after Katrine's body was found in the Antwerp port. The DNA research on the stamps of the letters indicates that the man had written these letters. Carl van Rompuy, father of three children, was already known to the public prosecutor's office for stalking and possession of child pornography. He first denies he is the letter writer, but after confrontation with the DNA results he admits, 
Carl will continue to deny he has anything to do with her disappearance or Katrine's murder. Here is his letter, July 8, 1992. As a fairly regular reader of your magazine, I always have the news regarding, closely followed the murdered Katrine de Kalpier. The letter is a confession of facts that have been causing me a crisis of doubt and ignorance for months as to whether or not I should go public with what I am now going to tell you. On the evening of December 17, 1991, I drove to the Antwerp docks in a, fortunately slightly, drunken state. If you think about it for a moment, you can guess which neighborhoods I was looking for. Without any results I drove back home. I don't know Antwerp at all and I was lost when I got there around 11 p.m. Picked up Katrine who was hitchhiking along the Iser lawn. This was followed by the conversation that I will now describe to you in my own words, as far as I can remember. Katrine towards Brashat? Me where is that? I have to go to X. Katrine that's the right direction for me you can drop me where you have to turn for, I'll then hitchhike on. After about two kilometers, Katrine told me that she had telephoned her parents from a cafe. They told her to make her plan. I dropped her off along the Bredabon, close to the entrance to the Antwerp Breda motorway, and took a quick look at her, she was a beautiful girl. I told her I was willing to take them home, but she said I didn't have to bother. Then I continued my way along the highway, towards the Antwerp Ring Road to return to X. It was only when I heard the dramatic news about her disappearance that I became afraid and kept quiet about it until now. I couldn't go to her funeral because I couldn't get leave. Well, I'll be there the next day, Thursday, two sevenths and on Sunday. Five sevenths came to visit her grave at the Brassgate Cemetery along the Max Hermanle. I will do this once a week. Why I am writing this letter to you and not going to the police or gendarmerie myself is simply because it doesn't matter much anymore, Katrine is dead and I am afraid that people will suspect me and question me for a long time. I am a good citizen and I want to remain one. I will be unhappy and disappointed all my life because Katrine is no longer here. For a moment I even fell in love with her in the car, now I'm angry with myself for not pushing further to take them home. If I had had that courage, she would still be alive today. And there are still things bottled up in me, things that are actually bad for her father he conceals everything in connection with that phone call, I understand him well, everyone would otherwise have blamed him. He should never have neglected his fatherly duties towards his daughter, why on earth didn't he go and get her? Who leaves their 15 year old daughter alone at night on the Antwerp docks, I wouldn't have been able to do it myself. This letter is the only safe way for me. You may transfer it to the people in charge of the research and or even publish it. I don't think it will be of much use to them and I don't know more than what I have said now. I have done my duty and will have to spend my whole life thinking that I was the last to see Katrine alive. The weekly visits that I will make from now on to the Brassgate Cemetery will always make me think, think about whether or not I will ever make my name known. I will never forget Katrine. Van Rompuy is released regarding Katrine's murder. With the release, the search for Katrine de Kalpier's murderer comes to a halt again. The investigators do not find a single new trail, not a single new lead for further investigation. The investigation never stopped to this day. If you are a fan of cold cases, or crime cases in general, check out the recommended video that will pop up on your screen in a few moments. Thanks for watching.